What's up, Smarty Pants? Question. Do you have any siblings? If you do, do you get along with them? Yeah, it's not easy. I'm about to visit my niece and nephew. And I gotta say, for a brother and sister, they get along really well. Maybe I'll get them to share their secret for always getting along. Come on, let's go find them. Your doll's stupid. Mine's awesome. No, yours is stupid. Nuh-uh. Mine's the best. No, mine is. Mine is. Mine. Mine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jacob? Olivia, are you fighting? (gasps) He's making fun of my doll. He says it's lame. Yeah, because it is. No, my doll's pretty. Yours is ugly. Whoa, whoa. That's not nice. Plus, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. Sorry, Sorry, Uncle Uncle Jay. Jay. What dolls are we even talking about? My Barbie. Lame. How can she be lame? She has a dune buggy, a surfboard, and a dream house with an elevator. Yeah, well, my G.I. Joe has a remote-controlled Jeep with a rocket launcher that shoots actual rockets. Whoa. You could shoot your eye out with that thing. Don't worry. Mom hid the rockets. Could. Now, let's see if I can solve your problem. Tell him that Barbie's the best. No, tell her that G.I. Joe is the best. What if I told you both, you're both right, and that they're both the best? Huh? That's right. But first, we need to understand where Barbie and G.I. Joe even came from. Who thought up these kinds of toys? And how have they evolved? It's time for another whiff of science and history on... Who's smarted? Who's Who's smart? Is it you? Is it me? Is it science or history? Listen up, everyone. We make smarting lots of fun. On who's smarted? Okay, what were we talking about? Barbie. G.I. Joe. That's right. There's Barbie with her long blonde hair, stylish clothes, and tons of accessories. And G.I. Joe with his commando look, bulging muscles, and futuristic weapons. Two classic American toys that are both wildly popular today. But while most of you listening probably can't remember a time when these toys didn't exist, back in the early 1950s, no one had even heard of Barbie because she didn't exist. In fact, the only kinds of dolls available for girls to play with were baby dolls. You can play mommy right now with ideals Betsy Wetsy. Betsy Wetsy cries real tears. Yikes. Fortunately, a woman named Ruth Handler was about to change all that. She and her husband had just started a toy company in Southern California called Mattel. And their first and only product was a small ukulele for kids called the Ukadoodle. It didn't sell very well. But one day, Ruth noticed her daughter playing with paper dolls. Huh? Basically, flat cardboard photos of young women that little girls could dress up by folding flat photos of clothes onto them. What? Yeah, not super exciting. But Ruth had a better idea. What if, instead of flat, boring paper dolls, we made a three-dimensional plastic doll? And instead of a baby in a diaper wetting itself? It was an attractive young woman little girls could look up to and admire. We could make a whole line of clothes and accessories for the dolls so the little girls could change their dolls and look in all sorts of ways. Ruth felt like she was onto something, but some of the other workers at Mattel, mostly men, thought her idea was crazy. Girls don't want to pretend to be fun and fashionable women. They want to pretend to be moms. What girl doesn't want to care for a crying baby and practice changing dirty diapers? After all, that's what they'll be doing when they grow up, right? Yeah, the 1950s were not super progressive. Luckily, Ruth ignored all the mansplainers and went ahead and made the doll she knew her daughter would love. Oh, and any guesses what her daughter's name was? Barbie, duh. That's right. Ruth named what was soon to become an iconic doll after her own daughter, Barbie. Wait, her kid's name was actually Barbie? Yep. That's crazy. Can we get back to the story, please? Yes. When the Barbie doll hit toy shelves across the country in 1959, the 11 and a half inch Southern California girl is an instant hit. 
Like, wow, you guys, I'm totally flattered. This is super cool. Now, let's hit the beach and hang 10. Surf's up! Was that you doing a Barbie voice? That was terrible, Uncle Jay. Sorry, won't happen again. Anyways, Barbie was not joking about hitting the waves. A big part of what made Barbie so popular wasn't just the doll herself, but all of her fun clothes and accessories like surfboards, dune buggies, a dream house, even her super popular wedding gown. But there was a problem. Little girls across the country began to wonder, why would Barbie have a wedding dress, but no groom? So, Mattel decided to make a boy doll to go along with Barbie. Any guesses what the boy doll's name is? Boy Bee. I like how you think, but no. It's Ken. Duh. Right again. And let me guess, Ken is named after Ruth Handler's son. That's right. And within a few years, Barbie and Ken became pop culture icons, making Mattel the number one toy maker in America. Whoa. The success of Barbie led other toy makers to create all kinds of dolls, like Disney princess dolls and American girl dolls, just to name a few. All I'm hearing is Barbie, Barbie, Barbie. When are we going to get to G.I. Joe? Right now. Because while Barbie and Ken were making a splash for Mattel... Woohoo! Come on in, Ken! The water's swell! Ugh, you said you weren't going to do that voice again. Can we get back to the story? Yes. While Barbie was doing her thing on the West Coast, on the other side of the country, in Rhode Island, another toy company, Hasbro, was trying to come up with a new toy to follow their first and only hit so far, Mr. Potato Head. Believe it or not, The first version of me didn't include a plastic potato to stick funny eyes, noses, and mouths on. The original me was just a bunch of eyes, noses, and mouths, and you had to provide your own potato. Talk about playing with your food. Feel free to never do that voice again either. Man, you kids are tough. Anyway, seeing how popular Barbie and Ken were with girls, Hasbro decided to make a similar kind of doll, but for boys. The only problem? the president of Hasbro had one simple rule. No dolls. Ever. Fortunately, a few employees thought up a way to get around their boss's strict no dolls ever rule. They just needed him to approve their idea. Uh. So first, they went out and bought a Ken doll. Then, they took a metal file and shaved down Ken's flowy blonde surfer dude hair so it looked more like a military crew cut. No, not my hair, bro. That was good, Uncle Jay. Props. Thanks. Then they ditched Ken's tank top and beach shorts and made little army fatigues for him to wear instead. And presto, they had a heroic soldier, what the U.S. Army used to call G.I.s, which stood for General Infantry. Uh. And what super American name do you think they chose to go along with that G.I.? Ken? What? No. Joe. Duh. I meant G.I. Joe is actually a Ken doll? No, 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 that was just a prototype, or first version, to convince the boss to make a doll. In fact, they weren't done convincing him, because the boss hated dolls so much, they had to come up with a totally new name to describe this kind of toy. Can you guess what it was? Was it A, a combat dude, B, a movement man, or C, an action figure? Did you say C? Bingo. The action figure was born. And when this rugged toy soldier, with accessories sold separately, stormed American toy shelves in the summer of 1964, he too was a runaway smash. By Christmas, every action figure was sold out. And seeing the success of G.I. Joe, other companies began making action figures based on comic book heroes like Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. A few years later, When the movie Star Wars hit theaters, toy stores were suddenly filled with action figures of Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Darth Vader. Wow, if it wasn't for G.I. Joe, we wouldn't have any action figures. Yeah, but if it wasn't for Barbie, we wouldn't have G.I. Joe. All true, but I haven't told you the craziest part about Barbie and Joe yet. What? I'll tell you right after this quick break. Now back to who smarted. So, as Barbie and Joe became ridiculously popular for the companies that made them, some parents and critics weren't so fond of the toys. Some thought that Barbie promoted an unrealistic body image to young girls and didn't reflect the diversity of the country. Oh. 
while other parents thought G.I. Joe was too aggressive, promoting war and violence. Oh. Yep. But it's cool because both Mattel and Hasbro heard the criticism and made changes. After disappearing from shelves in the early 1980s, Joe got a reboot with a little help from Marvel Comics, launching a new comic book and animated TV series. Uh. But instead of being a U.S. soldier fighting against foreign countries, G.I. Joe was now part of an elite special ops unit battling a completely fictional enemy, Cobra, and their evil leader, Cobra Commander, who were trying to take over the world. Also, in the cartoon, no one ever dies. Uh. Yo, Joe! It's G.I. Joe against Cobra the enemy fighting to save the day. As for Barbie, Mattel recently unveiled a totally new look for the 50-year-old fashion icon. She now comes in four different body shape options and a variety of skin tones. Uh. So instead of little girls dreaming of looking like Barbie, Barbie looks like them. Wow. Ken looks the same. Yeah, I guess we were both right. G.I. Joe and Barbie are both pretty cool. Yeah. Ooh, we can play dolls together. You mean action figures. And yeah, why not? Come on. Told you they get along. I know my niece and nephew. And knowing's half the battle. A big shout out to super fans Matt and Julia listening in Green Lane, Pennsylvania. This episode, Barbie vs. G.I. Joe, was written by Jason Williams and voiced by Colin Cameron, Gia Davis, Charlotte Cohn, Adam Tex Davis, Jason Williams, and Jerry Colbert. Technical direction and sound design by Josh Hahn. Who Smarted is recorded and mixed at the Relic Room Studios, and our associate producer is Max Kendall Kamaski. The theme song is by Brian Suarez. Lyrics written and performed by Adam Tex Davis. Who Smarted was created and produced by Adam Tex Davis and Jerry Colbert. This is an Atomic Entertainment production.